Hello and welcome to the stories of Northern Life from the Sault Ste. Marie Museum. We have hollow heads here at the Sioux Museum today and I couldn't be more excited. They are a group of four very talented local musicians that joined forces to create their band Hollow Heads. They formed last summer and have since released their first single and are currently working on producing their second on their own. They have played shows at the Tap Room, Outspoken, Lob Lobs, Rotary Fest, Downtown Street Parties, Weddings, and at many other locations and numerous other local events. These people hold a special place in my heart because I've gotten to see their progress from day one, literally having their first band meeting in my basement. I did not make the cut for the band, I do not share the music abilities with my brother, the bass and guitar player for the band, but I've been to nearly every show and listened to every single first phone recording of an original song. So I do feel like an honorary bandmate through filming, photography, managing their socials, and designing merch too. But enough about me and my love for these people. If you haven't heard of Hollowheads, I am very privileged to introduce them to you today. And if you do know who they are, you are for sure going to get to know them a little deeper. So let's get into it. On everything. Ah. <laughs> so hello, hollow heads. Hello. <laughs> so first, I want each of you to introduce yourselves and what role you play in the band. Okay, I'll start, I guess. So my name is Ethan Rudy. Uh, I share guitar and bass with Liam and the occasional background vocal if I'm in the mood. And I'm Gabby, and I'm the lead singer. I'm Liam, uh, and I play mainly guitar and bass, in case you throw in some banjo, too. <laughs> and I am Joe, and I play the drums. Awesome. So I want to talk about each of your music journeys to start before we get into the band. Um, so can you start by talking about your music journey? When did it start? What major influence got you each into music? And what have you done to get you where you are now? And don't feel rushed in answering. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess mine really started in high school when I was like 16, 17. And I kind of decided I wanted to start playing guitar. I felt really left out at campfires when everyone was jamming. And I was like, fuck, I can do that. Come on. And uh, yeah, I started taking it a little bit more seriously, adding a third chord to my repertoire so <laughs> I could actually play a song. Um, but then I had a recording class and mixing and it got me involved in like actually making my own stuff But it really started out as like SoundCloud rapper trap beats <laughs> and, and uh, Yeah, and I started my own little studio in my basement and uh, I tried to get everyone involved and even people that should not be rapping were rapping <laughs> But I told myself if I can make them sound good. I can make anybody sound good It was quite the challenge um, and then, yeah, from there, I kind of drove away from the rap stuff and started falling in love with guitar more. And, yeah, slowly learning more until eventually I got the opportunity to be in a, a band and play shows and really hone the guitar stuff and uh, play better music. <laughs> yeah, and that, that was mostly it for me, and it's been a journey. For me, like, I, honestly, I started, like, playing, like, super young. Like, it started with, um, like piano a little bit and I just like doing that but I mostly just wanted to sing like so anything I was doing other than that was just like as a means of transportation sort of for my vocals so like I dabbled with guitar a little and like piano and like I can kind of like I can get through songs and whatever but like my main area of like wanting to like play music is definitely singing um and then I started writing like super young and that was I mean like writing as a preteen would like terrible <laughs> like you you already are know, know the songs even though you haven't heard them it's like rhyming the words that you come to mind um and then that turned into like getting a little older recording class with ethan that's actually how we kind of got connected mm. in music and then you know being connected with other like musicians and like learning how much i didn't know kind of got me into practicing more and things like that and then I did shows performed like solo um like guitar and vocal shows and then yeah then I took vocal lessons because I was like oh there's I'm not as great as I think I, am. <laughs> I was like I can learn some things and then like that really honed in like technique and stuff just in like a couple lessons mm -hmm. 
And then, yeah, I was like, okay, what's next step? And I was like, posted a story. I said, does anyone want to start a band? <laughs> <laughs> then we started a band, and now we're here. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so my my journey started at four years old. Started uh, <laughs> taking guitar lessons. Um, so yeah, I was playing guitar for years and slowly been picking up different instruments throughout my life. So picking up the bass, picking up the drums, piano, a little bit of saxophone in high school music class, uh, banjo, ukulele, a little bit of bagpipes. Pretty much anything I can get my hands on, I've been trying to learn. Um, that's pretty much how I progressed through my music career and just. Um, since high school, I've really just been trying to learn things on my own for the most part, just learning different songs, learning different tabs, and more recently trying to create my own music, find my own, my own voice, my own style, and just going from there. All right, well, I'm like basically the complete opposite of Liam. I, I have not been doing music for that long. Like I, I had some basic piano lessons when I was super young, but that didn't last long, and then literally no music in my life until like grade 11, piggybacking off of Ethan's uh, SoundCloud rap era. He uh, convinced me to download FL Studio, which is like a computer program for making beats. And I just did that for like three years. I loved it, got into it. And then uh, eventually moving away to university, one of my roommates, Charlie Elder, is a singer. And uh, he was looking to start a group, but there was no drummers or anything. So I was like, Always like I, I always thought it was a cool instrument and I liked it uh, growing up, but I never thought I'd actually play it. And then one day I just said, screw it, and bought some drums. And then literally three weeks later, me, Charlie, and Ethan went out on stage and played a gig. That <laughs> is awesome. <laughs> it was quite stressful, but I played the most basic stuff I could, but figured it out through just three hours a day of practicing and YouTube tutorials. And uh, I think you killed it. Yeah, yeah it, that's amazing. It, it's pretty good. Um, and then, yeah, I think I'm about a year and a half into actually playing the drums now. And uh, completely self-taught, just YouTube videos basically driving awesome. me through it. But, uh, yeah, no, I love it. Like, love music ever since I started. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Awesome. So now I want to talk about the band, how it formed. You kind of touched on it, Gabby, but I want to get a deeper story as to how it all began. I just remember I got a message from you. I don't know. Yeah. Like, from, from my perspective, I was... I was living with Ethan in Ottawa at the time, and we had just started our thing with uh, Charlie there. And I saw Gabby posted on her Instagram story, like looking to start a band. And I obviously had like heard some of her songs before, knew how talented uh, she was. So I ran upstairs. I'm like Ethan, like <laughs> 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 I, I, I knew they were going to post. So I was like, yeah, text her right now. Let's get this going. And uh, yeah, it just so happened that Liam also messaged uh, messaged her and was looking to play bass. So it was literally like bass, guitar, drums, vocals. It worked out just perfectly. And then I felt like we meshed pretty well right from the start from yeah. the yeah. practice. That's so. good. And then from my perspective too, like it all, like for me, it really started with wanting to, like I know like my strong suit is singing. Mm -hmm. Like I know like I can technically play these instruments, but like we all know like that's not where I belong. And so like it was taking away my, from my focus of singing. So I was like, okay, I need a band. Like I want a band. <laughs> and also like I want the vibes and like, anyway, so Definitely. we posted that story and then you responded and yeah and then E of course like responded and I think I personally reached out to you too I was like would yeah, you be interested or something I don't remember the details <laughs> yeah I don't remember the final I think I remember bad. you telling me that Liam reached out and that we could get together and then Joe and I were next to each other in the house so it's just like okay yeah it just like clicked yeah <laughs> awesome yeah. so the initial intention was was really just to create music or what was it well, that was I, I mine, but... Like, yeah, I don't know, like, just seemed like fun. It was fun playing yeah. the instrument, and it's fun playing with other musicians. Mm -hmm. But everybody in the group's, like, super talented, so, I, like, I don't know, it was just basically just for fun, just to make some cool music, have a good time. And yeah. has that changed? Is that still the same intention, or...? <laughs> well, we were talking about this, what was it, the other day? I don't know, we were, like, how... When we started the band, it was really just like, let's get out in the community and play shows and get, like, we know what it feels like to play with a band and have that kind of chemistry as yeah. musicians. And, you know, naturally when we jam, you know, we were just noodling around and we ended up writing like, what, 15 songs last summer? <laughs> plus, plus Gabby's originals that we would just adapt with, uh, with the rest of us. Oh, the yeah. And then... Um, and then I guess this summer we've been just kind of honing in on those originals and playing more and then trying to record ourselves this time yeah. instead of recording at an expensive studio. Um, so yeah, I, just, it, I guess the only thing that's really changed is trying to 
produce more and get it all out in yeah. streaming yeah, services. Just, just and, it was kind of like another level. Up. Yeah, like, especially not just originals. Being a jam band, like get, get right. legit, get our, yeah. get us like nice and tight. We've had to our, say, we've had our... to say no to a couple birthday parties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to be right now, but, yeah. I eventually start getting our music out there for people to stream, and I think that's where yeah. the real yeah. success comes from. So, can we dive deeper into your creative process in creating original music? Oh, we have a few iterations it's, on our yeah, creative process. It's never really been a consistent like thing. It's like one of us will present an idea, and then usually it's just kind of noodle yeah. around, jam around until we find like some stuff we like, yeah, and then just yeah. eat, like take a couple parts, put them together, and yeah. then eventually just piece it together into a final arrangement. Yeah, we really just start with an idea and then just jam for yeah. like 15, yeah. 20 minutes, yeah. see what we like, listen back, and then see what we like, see what's good, see what's bad. And, yeah. Yeah. and then we have the songs of Gabby's that we will, uh, you'll, you'll come to us with something that's put together and really like flushed out lyrics, but then you don't really have the, the theoretical knowledge that we do, so we just kind of hone it in a yeah. little bit. It's like when we translate it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's like super important to note too one thing jumping back to a couple questions before I think it's like super crucial to like know that the first group chat we ever created was called summer band project <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really funny but back to right now um, so for creative processes like I think it's really cool to see um, songs that like they're saying like ones that I've brought fully formed and then it's just like filling in the blanks kind of I think that there's like a really cool difference between those songs mm. and the songs that are starting with like a lick on a guitar or like oh like let's write a song that feels like a 50s psychedelic diner song and like you know like we like there's there's lots of processes where like we want to write a song that fits a, like has a certain taste and then there's other songs where it's like let's make lyrics and drums fit around this beautiful guitar lick and like let's make that a song and then there's yeah. songs where I'm like I have something to say here's a set of lyrics and like a general feel yeah. and like make that happen sometimes the lyrics inspire the music other times the music inspires the lyrics yeah, yeah. there's not it's not really one set method we use yeah. really it's just whatever comes out like yeah. when we're just jamming and then yeah sometimes I always works sometimes doesn't I don't know yeah. <laughs> I always think it's cool to see the progression of each song like say Gabby would like send in like just like a little vocal track with some acoustic chords and then all of a sudden yeah, has a chug bridge so yeah, that's always my favorite part, just seeing the progression, how yeah. creative we can get. Even that. from the songs we, we had last year to like how we're like rethinking them this year. Like, what, like when we redid Lucy at the start of the yeah. summer, it was just like, I don't know, it just evolves, you know, throwing in some yeah. different tones this yeah. time or throwing in a couple different solo ideas. Yeah. And also just growing as musicians. For me, yeah, especially like with how little I've been doing it, like my progression like from last summer to this one changed like drastically so a lot of the parts I wrote for the songs last summer yeah. I want to change them because I know more yeah. stuff like I yeah. know what can fit better so it's like yeah. just kind of taking them to the next level stuff like that yeah um, I I am so envious of like what you guys created because it's not normal that you see like a group of people that are just so creatively connected and create for the sole purpose of creating right like that's not very common um so super cool um uh, so you guys released a song, Complicated. <laughs> Go listen to it on all streaming platforms. Um, so was this the first time each of you have ever released a song? Not me. No. Yeah. Like basically um, for me, other than, other than some random yeah. beats and stuff like that. But yeah. I had some cringy high school music on school. <laughs> yeah. What was my name? Della Rude. Della Rude. Yeah. <laughs> What the SoundCloud one or? Yeah. <laughs> All I want. Yeah. Oh, when we sampled Justin Timberlake. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was fun. That we made that on 420 one day. It was. Yeah. It was oh, the music was half the time terrible. But that was probably, basement rap sessions were yeah. so much fun. But that was probably like the first decent beat I ever made when yeah. I was like learning how to do it, and it wasn't just like stock sounds and just. Like, <laughs> 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 Um, but no, it was a cool sample. Aiden and I were getting into sampling, and we had some girls at our house, so we just <laughs> wanted to impress them with making something cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, pff, I don't think so. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, and then, I don't know, I just, 
I, had, I think I only ever released one other thing onto Spotify, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I don't remember what it was called. It was like some Wish You Were True song, and it was like an emo rap song. Uh, let's just skip the topic. Skip. <laughs> <laughs> skip. No. And then for me, I also... Did you... Have you guys released... I don't even know I, this. I just, like, beats on YouTube and, like, a couple, like, remixes I made, but nothing, yeah. nothing other than that. Yeah, for me, this is like my first real experience, like actually creating a whole entire song and actually recording it and producing it. Like I've just been like a bedroom guitar player my entire <laughs> life. Like I just learn tabs and like fool around on my own, but never really created something, which is why I felt yeah. like this, you know, yeah. the band, this project was really, really cool for me. And then for me, I, I have released one song before. It was um <clears throat> like a sort of like a duet, like a... Um, yeah, duet. It was um, sponsored by Scion, and there was like a company they were reaching out and funding like young people to produce songs, and they basically wow. paid for you to have it produced, but they paired you up with someone. And the like objective or challenge was to write a song with someone else. And I mean, we got together very late at last minute, right before the deadline, basically. So we kind of just like used songs that we had already. I don't know if Simon wants to hear that, but we didn't really. <laughs> but um, so we used one of those songs, and it was a really cool experience, too. That was my first um, experience going through it. But she had released a song before, the person I was paired up with, Lindrina Elise. So she kind of held my hand through that, so it was cool. Yeah, awesome. So oh, Do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you, question mark? <laughs> like a yellow cover. Um, so how does it feel releasing Complicated as a band, like your first song as a band? How does that even contrast from the songs that you've released and that feeling? Four times the hype. Yeah. It's cool, or right? two times for me, but... <laughs> yeah, it, no, it was, it was a process, yeah. like recording, and it took us, what, two months? Oh, a long it time. Long show, <laughs> yeah, like we have a hard schedules to combine it's, together yeah. and, and get right. together, and we, we had an idea of what the song was from where we were performing it, and... We wanted to really like think about how we want it to be like as a studio version. So we would jam, and we had you know Bill Priddle and Dustin Goodall helping us out a bit, and uh, we kind of fleshed out a, a, a vision of the song mm. that was decent. And you know, working through it was sometimes really difficult. Like, oh, I don't like that. I don't know how do we, how do we want the chorus guitar to be? But you it's, know, it's that's some, you know that you have a final product. Yeah, it's like you got. Exactly that's the, the the worst part about recording in the modern era is knowing you have infinitely in many takes right. you know and that you can just keep doing it and sometimes no. you just got to decide on what something but i don't know i really like how it ended up mm -hmm. i could have th thought of a million different ways it could have been but right. you know, sometimes you just got to take it as it is um and then yeah it's cool being involved with like all the technical recording stuff and mixing and mastering and then the the promotion kind of stuff we're also gonna think about renaming our band a million times <laughs> <laughs> because of the the whole other hollow head situation yeah but um no yeah i'm, I'm really yeah, yeah we can talk about that <laughs> even yeah. even the process of picking your name in the first place i know um, that was a long process <laughs> yeah well, well, picking the name, it was like we we had our first show lined up, like <laughs> before we were before we were even a band. Like we we already had a gig for at, at peace at the end of the month, and we were like, okay, this is our first meeting. What songs do we want to play? All right, let's start try them. And like the first few times we played a couple covers, it was like, wow, that was way better than it should have been. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then yeah, the insane. time was. Uh, ticking they're like we need a name to promote you guys and we just kept i we don't just, know we literally just rapid fired random like words off and like tried for i think two sessions yeah for yeah. a while and then we just came with like oh that's the first one that we were like yeah this doesn't suck like, <laughs> <laughs> let's go and and like we knew two things going into it. like we knew we wanted it to be like not just a face value name like we knew we wanted it to have some depth to it or like a like a dual entendre or like a an irony to it yeah and we also knew what's that literary device called where it's like double oh. letters Alliteration. Alliter oh. Alliteration. We knew we wanted it like to be like a double lettered, alliterated. Is that a <laughs> name? I'm gonna use that. Um, so then it was just like going through the motions of like, we knew and we had heads down for a while. I think. Yeah, and, or like a body general, part. Yeah. yeah. If you guys yeah. seen the name, you should <laughs> see that notebook. It's <laughs> yeah. disgusting. I remember. It, like the brainstorm, we're laying yeah. in the grass in Liam's backyard, yeah. and we're like, "Okay, we got our like channel, some creativity yeah. here," and we're like, "It's freaking cold out." Like, <laughs> 
But yeah, sorry. Did you Oh, that's a, that's a thing. Yeah. 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 Hollow heads is just so we landed on it. It it rang the best. Yeah. yeah. And I remember too, because we said it, because Ethan wasn't quite out of band practice yet, and so I forget who. Yeah. Just, yeah. 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 just me and you guys. You guys just I think so, yeah. I think it was you and I. Yeah. And 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 I uh, was it me or you? I think you. I was like hollow heads, really and you're like, eh? Yeah. I was like hollow. You're like, eh? <laughs> Joe comes in, like, and we're like, sorry, Joe, hollow heads. <laughs> yeah, he comes in, everybody can say hi, hollow heads. He's like, all right. <laughs> and then we were like, hollow heads, hollow heads, hollow heads. And then Ethan comes in, and we're like, Ethan, stop. Hollow <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then it was like. And I was like, you guys like? Yeah. Okay. okay. And we are just like, like sent. Like, we didn't commit on a time. We would never find anything. It would be another like, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. And then that night we recorded like demos of like the first like, I think like six songs that we wanted to uh, yeah. nail down and start recording. So that was cool. complicated. Yeah. 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 Um, Little Lover was in there. Yeah, Little Lover. I think Emily was alive at that point. I don't know. Emily was alive. Yeah, I think Emily was alive. She's still alive. <laughs> she's <laughs> born. <laughs> she's in a file somewhere. But um, yeah, we uh, essentially it's important to note that we had like six originals before we had a name. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. It stuck. Yeah. Until like when we started, like yeah. Yeah, that really got the ball rolling. Really like, I'm sorry, I'm really talking this. It's okay. And when was like the date that you really started or like close to? Kind of been. It was like middle of late May. Yeah. Our yeah, first, first show was on June first, I think. Yeah. Or that was this. Mm, or, well, there was. Well, look at um, look at our Instagram. No, yeah, our uh, first was show was like May thirtieth, June first. Yeah, I remember May. So we would have we yeah. would have started in like then, so, May tenth. Three weeks, three weeks yeah, but I think the, bir- the birthday on our uh, on our, our our Gmail account oh, is yeah. the day we started. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then like I don't know. I feel like our, our band name's meaning is really open to interpretation. Yes. But like we didn't we didn't have a solid meaning around it. But a lot of our friends are like, it sounds like you guys are just all a bunch of idiots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like maybe intelligence isn't the biggest thing ever. But I don't know. I like to think about it as ego. You know, like just like yeah. it's really easy to be super egotistical and hollow heads is the kind of like no, we're just making stuff. Yeah. We're not trying to be anyone really. We're just having fun expressing what we think. Yeah, I always tell people what our, they always ask what our band name is. I'm like, oh, Hollow Heads. And they're like, what does that even mean? I'm like, that's up to you. <laughs> what do you think it means? I love it. <laughs> Who would you be without your brain? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about shows. Where have you done shows? What have you done? Where? All over the map. Um, okay. I'm just listed up. Relay for Life, Peace Restaurant, Northern Superior Tap Room. Outspoken Brewery, Lop Lops, Algoma University, <laughs> Rotary. Rotary Fest, times two. Times two, as of um, two Whitefish. hours from now. Whitefish Island. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We gotta think of the impromptu. Blasters. Blasters. Two Blasters. Blasters. Yeah, yeah, open for a time. Playing, uh, we're playing on St. Joe's the end of this month. Where is that? That's a St. Joe's Miranda. Yeah. The Marina. Um, is that it? Hopefully, uh, Kingston and Ottawa. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, Fox. we can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Global tour. I swear we played somewhere else, though. Yeah. Oh, the street party last oh, year. Yeah, yeah. Street, street and March, street. and then March Street this summer. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then those places, like Tap Room, we've done lots of them, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a lot of Thanks, Liza. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. 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 Tap Room. Best yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, and, like, all the different venues have had all their shares of challenges, like, sonically i used to get really right. bothered playing at the tap room because the ceilings are so high and mm. we used to use like two big speakers and the reverb and all of this stuff was always a nightmare and uh, yeah. we didn't we didn't doing our, own sound, doing our own sound stuff and also trying to use the used gear that we've yeah. Like, yeah. managed to collect <laughs> and like <laughs> with some experience we learned you know maybe let's just rent new that, stuff yeah. every time and then like we slowly started implementing monitors in the mix and then yeah. some more 
microphones so that we can hear ourselves and uh, the, the biggest nightmare has to be though trying to sound check when like somebody in the band has to be out there checking the levels yeah. and it's like you can't right. get a sound like you can't get somebody to, like listen yeah. to the whole band also shout out <laughs> terrence for being yeah. our sound guy for yeah. a lot of those situations <laughs> But yeah, the monitors, I think, made the biggest difference in I terms of our performance. Like, oh, yeah. being able to hear ourselves yeah. play means that we can, like, know we sound good. Yeah, that was a super pivotal point, like, for me, I would say, too, because, maybe specifically, because I remember looking back at videos and I was like, why am I off key? And then it was, like, driving me nuts. I'm like, right. are you kidding me? Like, this is what you guys were hearing? Like, I was so yeah. bummed. And then we got monitors, and I was like, oh, I couldn't yeah. hear. Like, I couldn't oh. hear what I was saying. People That's still bad. thought we sounded good, though, so that was good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then playing at Lop Lops and uh, Rotary oh, events. Oh, and nice. when we have sound guys that have everything set up, so and we can just show right. up like rock stars and just play. Uh, top of the line equipment. Do yeah. Sound yeah. Really yeah. Sound good, <laughs> Stage two exactly actually has want. amps this time, so I can yeah. just pull up with the guitar and the pedal board. Yeah. Woo! Woot. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So we are recording this on Saturday, July fifteenth, just a few hours before you're playing Rotary Fest for the second mm -hmm. year in a row. Um, what was performing at Rotary like last year, and is this something that you ever thought like you would do, like growing up here, because you're all from here? Was that something that you like envisioned for yourself? Never, never. I think I did one. I did one performance as a SoundCloud rapper at Two Blasters, and it was. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest verse, but I hopped in there. I had a couple people that were just trying to get on the mic, and the guy there was like really trying to push us to the last possible minute. But we were like, you know, we're still gonna try. And that was fun, but no, absolutely not did I think I'd be playing stage two or any kind of uh, thing. That was our soon. first actual stage gig, wasn't it? Yeah, like, that was, that was oh, our yeah. first like time where we had like sound techs and I yeah. think other than that it was just. Oh, was not, no, I mean, yeah, we did a lot of late, and then uh, yeah, I think this is our first actual like being on a stage, somebody providing all our equipment, and like it was yeah. like, so nice, so fun. A couple yeah. sound hiccups last year, oh, as yeah. normal, but. Uh, it's still, it was a vibe. Yeah. I think those were moments where it's like, oh, maybe we should get some things like this when we play. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, what is it? We're asking people, what's that? What's that? Oh, okay. <laughs> You're just learning as we go. Just learning as we go. Yeah, I think everyone, like, as a kid, has that dream of being a rock star and, like, pictures of self up on stage. Um, but that, I feel like, was uh, a big moment for me personally, being, like, really out there on, like, a fairly professional stage. Play yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, like, one of the most, like, damn, what are you yeah, we can go <laughs> yeah, and like cool. Soup Blasters too. We didn't have the biggest crowd there, but we had the smoke machine and the lights. Yeah. And it, was yeah. Yeah. it was a vibe. It was a vibe. Yeah. Is it like wrong to say that like, <laughs> I kind of like, I don't know if that makes me like a snob or proud, but like low key, like I kind of thought I would be on like. <laughs> <laughs> like when I was like, no. like I remember like the first like time, like I wrote like a good song and I was like, okay. It's, I mean, like, it, I've, my writing process and, like, it's been very much so honed in and I've got, definitely gotten better with life experience and expanded vocabulary, things like that. Yeah. I mean, mind you, I make up words sometimes, like, <laughs> alliterated, but, um, yeah, I kind of, like, in the back of my mind, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Like, yeah, I'm going to go somewhere. So, like, yeah, yeah. So maybe not specifically Rotary Fest stage, but I definitely pictured myself, like, being on bigger stages one day. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what... What shows do you have lined up for the rest of the summer? The St. Joe's Island, um, yes, community the Community Day, Day thing. That's uh, the 28th, I think. It's a Friday. The, Last Friday. Yes, July, and then 29th, Lobstock, which is yeah. super, super Shout exciting. Lobstock, that's going to be Fire great. Tickets, they're selling out. Yeah. yeah. Was, and then... Yeah, was it like six straight hours of local music? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I love that. And then so. another tap room gig. Yeah. Hopefully, and then... Maybe. Uh, we're trying to figure that, like... Well, we're, we're, we're trying, trying to plan out... That, the like lot probably our last weekend in town. So we'll try to figure yeah. out. We're going back to school. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Get educated and then um, possibly <laughs> and then possibly. Kingston and Ottawa tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't get dream. that planned out. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, for the summer it's basically just this one, St. Joe's and uh, Lobstock that's confirmed, and then mm -hmm. definitely one more. But I'm not sure where or when that'll be. Yeah. 
Yeah. And producing your own song in house this time yeah. this summer. Yeah. 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 Basement yeah. studio making a comeback. <laughs> this time not with rappers and yeah. with a much larger audio interface that can actually handle yeah. all the instruments. Um, yeah, that's been a process. I've been enjoying it's it like, a lot. It's a lot cool, we cool have, with yeah, and we can just kind of do our own thing. And I've got a, we can flesh out a million ideas cool. in one session. And I don't know. We don't have like someone telling us how they think the song should be. Yeah, having the creative freedom. Yeah, yeah. The creative freedom on us. Get the song exactly how we want it. Yeah. It's, it's like super inevitable. Like like anyone who is like a musician themselves. Or like loves music like it's so inevitable like being around the production of something so creative to like mm-hmm. not have input and it's not yeah. bad necessarily yeah, you, but you, you it's need it at some points but uh, yeah i don't know the song we're recording now i think like we had it at a pretty set spot like going into the recording we didn't yeah. really we didn't really change much it was we were like where it was at so i i think personally it's probably like our best song we have yeah uh, most yeah like most like well well written well put together like everybody's like Everybody did their job like perfectly. Yeah, it's it's a nice jump from complicated because complicated was it was like we're playing it, like almost playing it safe with that one. It's yeah. like it's a catchy radio song like nobody's yeah. really going crazy, no solos, nothing like that. Yeah, and, and then this one's more of like a like here here's what we can yeah. do like this. This is all this is us as musicians. Yeah, everyone loved complicated from the live shows, so it's yeah. like we should record this. No, that one, it made little. sense to be our first single. Single it was yeah. the most catchy. It was the one that people could like. It had the most replayability. Yeah. People yeah. love it. Draw them, everyone so. in, get their attention. Yeah. yeah. So. I'm I'm really I'm really, really excited for Gypsy though. This is like a really like close to my heart song. Yeah. But, like, yeah what's left? We gotta just do some polish up the polish vocals, the vocals, lead guitar, and then I gotta yeah. grind some mixing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> get it get it mastered and then yeah. Promotion. Like, we, End of summer. Most of them we show up. Yeah, I think there's some things we can just touch up and then do some just, background vocals. Yeah, yeah. Final vocal takes and we're good. And then we're good. Awesome. On to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's wrap things up. Um, let's leave it at what would you say to young artists doing the thing that you want to do? I love that question. Great question. Yeah. Just, just go for it. Literally <laughs> just make a bunch of shitty songs. Really yeah, bad stuff. Like don't, don't get trapped in like a loop of just playing covers and other people's stuff because then that's like all you'll know. You gotta just yeah. like learn, you don't necessarily learn music theory but understand how songs work and like yeah. make your own stuff because that's so much more fun like being on the creative side of it than yeah. just like regurgitating other people's work. Yeah. Like, and it's such a satisfying feeling to make something that you're like proud of and you actually enjoy yeah. listening to. Learn music through experimentation. Like mm-hmm. literally just put your fingers somewhere and see what happens and, and see yeah. how that makes you feel. Yeah. And then express yourself and use it as like a meditative device. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, at the end of the day, have fun. Don't be too hard on yourself because it's so easy to get locked in your brain. Acknowledge that. And then, like, kind of what these guys are saying too. But I think it's like so so important. Like, passion trumps theory. Mm-hmm. Like for me, anyways. I mean, I don't have a lot of theory to back it up. So like, but it's super important. Yep. It's super super important. And also one other thing like that's super important for like young musicians, I think, is that people love listening to music. Like you like don't like hide it. Like I hear so many people they're like, "Oh, like I kind of play, but like I'm too scared to like even play around a campfire or something." And it's like people love it. Like even if you suck. I mean, like maybe it's nice to have a harsh review once in a while and be like, "Don't go on America's Got Talent," but like no, play for me. If you're not taking yourself seriously, then like nobody will nobody will dock you for not They'll, they'll respect you for getting out there actually playing yeah. and enjoy it. Yeah. Like, it's all about just having a good time. Just like, good vibes. Like, yeah. 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 Nike's music line. <laughs> just play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a big thing for me was the the collaboration is something I would definitely recommend. Yeah. Mm. Which really transformed like my growth and my ability to understand music and build songs and be yeah. creative really. So that's one thing I'd recommend. And just reach out to people, jam with your buddies, reach out to local yeah, places, man. make a band, yeah. seriously. <laughs> You'll get so much better at music if you're playing with other musicians. And even if you don't, you're gonna have a blast. Oh yeah. <laughs> you're gonna have a blast. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to share? Talk about? Um, rock on. Does that feel good? Yeah. Slay the house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know.
don't know. I don't really get. Oh yeah, merch coming soon. Coming soon. Oh yeah, merch coming soon. I don't know when this is coming out, but yeah, we're making shirts and stuff, posters, tote bags. Stickers, Shut up. Shut up. maybe. For the amazing design. Multi talented. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I want to end it with complicated too. Can I play it at the end? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Hollow <laughs> <laughs> <Follow> heads. <laughs> <laughs>